What is PHP? PHP used to stand for personal home page. Now it is considered to stand for hypertext preprocessor. PHP allows you to create dynamic web pages. PHP is a server-side programming language and it is a scripted programming language. What this means is when you are sitting at your computer and you open a web browser and you go to a web server, if that web server calls a PHP script, the script in its entirety is run on the server itself and then the results from that script are sent to your web browser, to your client. It is a scripted programming language. What this means is that the programs are not compiled. They are created in a simple ASCII text editor. An interpreter is installed on the web server, and then when the script is called, that text file is read by the interpreter on the server, and that is what's turned into the programming language to do whatever the program says. Finally, this is a great cross-platform programming language, and what this means is it can work on Windows Windows servers, it can work on Linux servers, and it can even work on Mac OS X servers. So you can use PHP on IIS and on Apache web servers to create dynamic websites. With standard HTML web pages, basically what you see is what you get. Everything has to be hand coded if there are any changes. With PHP, you are allowed to create interactive websites. So from HTML, you'll be able to send emails, you'll be able to read and write to files, and you'll be able to read and write to MySQL and other types of databases. Essentially what happens is when you go to a web page with your web browser, that will be created in HTML. Now, if you go to a web page with an HTML form, that HTML form will point to a PHP script. So it asks, if it asks for your name, it, if it asks for your email address, if it asks for any information, that information will be sent to a PHP script, and then that PHP script will be able to send that information out either as an email, it'll be able to save it into a file, or it will be able to save it into to a database. PHP can also read from files and databases and dynamically write HTML code to create dynamic HTML web pages. As an example, this is a simple PHP script. I have written this PHP script on my Windows computer simply in Notepad and called it nugget.php. Now with PHP scripts, you have to tell the interpreter that this is a PHP script. So you open the PHP script with a bracket question mark PHP. This opens a script. Here what we are doing is we are creating a variable called greetings and we are setting the value of the variable to the string hello world. We then want to print out to display on the web browser our greeting, so we will display the value of our greeting, and we want that within the H1 tag. So these are the standard old HTML H1 tags. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close the PHP script. So this opens a PHP script, this closes the PHP script. We set, we create and set a variable to hello world, and then we are going to print out the value of that variable. So I've uploaded this to my own web server. This is simply a GoDaddy account web server to www.elithecomputerguy.com forward slash test forward slash nugget.php. And now we see hello world has shown up. So PHP has written hello world on this web page. The important thing I want you to see though is if we go to the source code, we can see that all that has been written is the H1 hello world. We see none of the other code that the PHP script ran. So we do not see if hello world came from a database, we do not see if it came from a file. So all how this code was written, this HTML code was written is protected uh, so that you don't have to worry about hackers trying to figure out what databases you're using or what files you're using and so on. 
So PHP is used to create dynamic web pages. This allows you to use HTML to be able to write to files, write to databases, write to email. It allows you to pull information from files or databases and write that into HTML code. The reason that I suggest most people use PHP is that it's a relatively easy language to learn if you're a new programmer. And the PHP interpreter is on almost every single web server that's ever been deployed. Unlike Ruby on Rails or some of the other web programming languages, PHP is on everything. So if you go out to GoDaddy.com or OneOne.com or any of the other thousands of different hosting providers, they will all have PHP. So if you write PHP code, you know that PHP code will be able to run on those web servers. If you need to find out any more information about PHP, please go to php.net and there is just a plethora of information. Uh, they can tell you everything thing in the world about PHP. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hi this is Alex from PHP Academy and this is a quick guide to installing uh, Apache MySQL and PHP on your PC so you can start using it as a web server and start developing in PHP. Um, basically it's going to be in very short chunks of explaining different aspects of this. I'm not going to go through the install process because that's relatively straightforward. Um, if you go ahead and Google or head over to the URL that you can see in my browser now um, for XAMPP, um, this is a, a package that I've used for about five years now. It's uh, very basic, does the job, um, it's not very you know intensive on, on your system um, and essentially it contains Apache uh, MySQL and PHP which are the things that we are focusing on as PHP developers it also includes a host of other things in which are you know useful PHP MyAdmin is the interface between you and your MySQL database so when you're doing things like storing uh, data in a database you can need well you don't need but you it's very useful to use PHP MyAdmin uh, to create tables to insert dummy data and to review data that's been posted through your PHP application uh, it also includes things like GD, which is the image uh, manipulation library for PHP, and a host of other things as well. Um, what we are focusing on at the, in this tutorial, uh, not really tutorial, guide, uh, is Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And we'll take a brief look at PHP MyAdmin as well. So, um, once you've installed this or downloaded and installed, I'm going to be using, oh, I'm showing you on Windows, but it's available for Linux and Mac as well. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what happens once you have installed it. If I head over to here, um, I'm basically accessing 127.0.0.1 from my browser. You can also use localhost as well. Uh, that will bring you to this page and that, note, uh, that basically tells you that you have successfully installed um, Apache. You can take a look around here, I probably recommend just you know having a click on a few things and you know seeing what's going on. Um, it makes sense to you know take a look at various things on here since you're going to be running this in your system. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the control panel. So from your start menu or or whatever you're using, uh, you will have this control panel here, and it will tell you what services are running. Now you can't see PHP because PHP isn't really a service that runs; it's more part of Apache. So Apache is our web server, and MySQL is our database solution. Uh, and you can see that these are both running at the moment. Now I've got SVC checked, which means that I'm running these as system processes. Uh, so if I go ahead and just bring this over here, uh, just expand this a bit, you can see I've got Apache 2.2 here, and if I type my uh, oh, my in, you can see that we've got MySQL. So I start and restart things, so restart or stop uh, services from here. Uh, it might get to the point where you're developing and you might crash Apache or, or something like that, you know, you, you, you never know. Um, uh, you might want to go ahead and restart it or the same with MySQL as well. So you can either do this from this control panel, which I've found to be a bit dodgy. It doesn't work as well as perhaps you'd like it to. Uh, so this is why I run as services, so I can just hit restart and that will restart uh, that particular service. Okay, so um, what we're going to look at next is how we can go ahead and create our first page, uh, where we go to create our first page that we can run through our server, um, and uh, uh, we're also going to take a brief look at PHP MyAdmin as well, uh, our database interface. 
So let's take a look at the core folder of XAMPP and see what it contains. Um, so I'm over in C colon backslash XAMPP. It will be different depending on what, which operating system that you're running, obviously. Uh, but this is a guide for Windows. We've got all these uh, files which are probably somewhat meaningless to you. Um, most of them are to me, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the most important. PHP, if we need to configure PHP in any way, you'll find the uh, php.ini file in here. If we scroll down, there it is. Uh, and this basically contains some of the, oh, all of the settings that, you know, relate to PHP that we can change. We then can go ahead and restart Apache. Uh, and this will bring in all these changes. So uh, you'll need to probably change something in here at some point. For example, maximum file upload sizes, certain things that you'll come across that will give you instruction to go ahead and edit this file. Uh, and this is just a quick note that this is where you'll find it. And remember, head over to wherever you're starting or restarting Apache from. Restart that whenever you make a change to your php.ini file. Okay, so I have made... Um, a directory within htdocs and ah I didn't really explain that very well at all uh, so let me go ahead back to xamp htdocs is where all of your um, uh, files will go that you will want to show within your web server or you want to be accessible within your web server this can be changed you can go over to apache uh, conf and httpd.conf Let's go ahead and edit that. Uh, you'll see here that we've got a uh, load of you know, settings here. And I think if I type root, we've got server root, document root. Here we go. So the document root is the directory of which you will serve your documents. By default, we'll request taken from this directory, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you can go ahead and change this as well. So it might be C colon backslash uh, or C colon forward slash web or something like that. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to take a look at um, creating a file within these directories. So we've got our config here. What we want to do is we want to head over to htdocs, as I explained earlier. And this will contain a load of files that you, uh, basically a, is this that you can see in the browser at the moment. You've got, you'll have an XAMPP directory as well. So we're actually going to go ahead and load up our uh, text editor. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to type PHP and I'm going to end a tag down here. This isn't necessary if you've just got PHP in uh, your uh, file, by the way, but you know that's something to go on later. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a file called index.php. Now, index.php or index.something is going to be the file that by default uh, your web server will hit within a directory. So, index.php, if you had index.php and downloads.php index.php would be hit if just that directory was accessed so it's the root file that's accessed basically so I'm going to go ahead and echo here test and we're going to go ahead and try and run this file so I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser and I'm going to go localhost forward slash start and there we go we've got test output here so we're using we're now using PHP so that's where you'd keep all of your files um, basically we are you know if you followed the installation properly you don't have uh, any applications running that are using port 80 and you can see this localhost page and you can create files within your htdocs directory and you get an output like this then you are ready to go and you can start writing PHP